everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Jack, UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, and um, as always, and most importantly, a donut connoisseur. And today I'm gonna be going over some pro tips in Illustrator, focusing on the appearance panel. The appearance panel for me is one of the most powerful, maybe underutilized uh, panels in Illustrator. I like to think of it as my second layer panel specifically for layering on how a path or a shape looks using effects and transforms. Let me know throughout the stream if you have any questions as we're going through things today because right after the stream, uh, in about 30 minutes, you can join me in the Illustrator Discord in the Pro Tips After Party voice channel where I'll be answering those questions. And we've got a voice chat and a text chat if you just want to text so you can chat with me directly and just hang out. So I've placed an example that you might recognize um, from the uh, cover art, something I've done for a dear friend of mine in the past that utilizes um, a lot of appearance effects. Uh, the text up here is using the appearance panel. Um, this texture that we've got over the illustrations utilizing the appearance panel. So I thought it would be a good place to start to kind of go over um, how I constructed all of this um, for uh, what is essentially a real client. So I'm going to start off with an example using text since I th think that's probably the most um, versatile application of the appearance panel. So I'm just going to go over here and we grab my type tool and I'm going to click and make some point type. Click and make some point type and we're going to make it a little bit larger. So I've got some text on the screen. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick a font. I've already got a font in mind for this. Um, I'm going to be making this neon effect up here that we've got in our example. So following this, I want to use a script, um, a script that has is a monoline script. So a singular like width throughout and um, something that's got a um, connecting line on it. So if we take a look at this font here, um, this has a line that runs through it and connects all of our letters, which when you're kind of trying to decide um, how I like to think about like picking the decisions that I make, I look at a lot of like neon sign references and I look at like things I see like real neon signs doing and I think about that when I'm making these decisions, like studying how things look in the real world. So we've got our text here that kind of looks like neon uh, text. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of my fill here for a second. So I'm going to remove the fill and our text is going to disappear because we're going to be adding everything in the appearance panel. I like to manage all of my fills, strokes, and effects with the appearance panel when I know I'm going to be kind of stacking and layering things just because it's a little bit easier to manage when you've got like a weird uh, fill on something that's not in your appearance panel. Sometimes it can interfere with what you're doing. So it's just easier to kind of clear it all out. And down here along the bottom of our appearance panel, we've got these handy little icons for um, adding a new stroke, adding a new fill, or adding some new effects. So to start, I'm going to add a new fill. I'm just going to set that to be white. I'm starting kind of from the center out. So I'm going to be making that kind of light highlight right in the middle. Um, and then from there, we're going to add some gradations of color kind of radiating out to our final like darkest value of that color that's going to have a glow on it because that's kind of how a neon light works. So we've got our base text here and I'm going to just type out um, a name. Looks like I'm going to type in Umacorn from our live chat because I see Umacorn has joined us as well as just Raffle. Welcome. You can chat with us live in our live chat on Behance or on YouTube. I am going to then go into my fill here and I'm going to actually add a second fill. So I'm going to go down here and I can just tap on this add new fill and it's going to add a new fill for me. Now one of the things that's really important, I mentioned that the uh, appearance panel is like your um, layers but for visual effects and things. So the stacking order is going to be really important. So whatever's on top of my stack is going to be the thing that is visible first. Similar to how your layers panel work, whatever on top is the first in the stacking order and everything below that follows. So I'm going to go down to my underneath text, my underneath fill, and I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add a glow to this. I'm going to do like a, let's do pink. So I'm going to add a new, I'm going to add a new swatch just by clicking on this fill and adding that swatch there. Switch to hue, saturation, brightness. We're going to change this to, I'm going to go with pink. So I'm going to go with pink. I'm not going to go with full, full on, 
dark, saturated pink. I'm gonna go with something a little bit lighter because this is a transition. And then I'm gonna go in here and you're gonna say, oh my gosh, it's not showing up. Everything's not working. Jack, you're a liar. No, it's not true. Um, we can't see it because it's actually behind our white text. So what we need to do to make it visible is we need to add an effect. So I'm gonna go to the effects. I'm going to go to path and I'm gonna use offset path. When I do that, it's gonna add an effect that's gonna offset that from the original fill um, on our text. So I'm gonna change this to round because neon lights kind of have that round look to them. And I don't need it to be that, that's too much. We're gonna bring it way down to like, let's do like six point. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna add another new fill. Going down here to the bottom, I want this one to be darker. So we're gonna do the outermost layer. Um, and then I'm gonna add a new swatch and I'm gonna change it to our darkest pink. Again, it's gonna look weird because we've got, um, you know, our, we don't have another, another offset on this. So I'm gonna go open my fill and I'm gonna increase this offset. Um, I'm gonna bring it up. Okay, and it looks like something weird is happening here. Oh, my offset disappeared from this one. Well, let's add it back in. Path, offset path, bring it back down. And we fixed it. So I'm working with swatches today. So let's say we don't like this pink. It's a little bit too dark. I'm just going to go to this and I'm going to double click on my swatch and I'm going to bring it back down. Chill it out a little bit. Okay. So now we've got our base colors here and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add to this very back fill. That's where I'm going to add my um, glow because I want the glow to be on the outermost layer and the outermost layer in this case is actually the bottom of our layer stack. So in this fill, I've got an offset path and over that offset path, I'm going to add a outer glow. For my outer glow, I personally like to use normal. Um, I don't like to mess with the uh, blending modes. I just like using the pure color. So uh, normal will give you just the color. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna choose color swatches and I can just scroll on down or up a bit. We'll get there eventually. Oh, there's our pink. So I'm gonna pick my kind of dark pink so that everything stays consistent. I'm gonna bring that up to 100%. Now you can see that we've started to got a little bit of a glow on that. Um, I'm gonna increase it up to maybe, let's go with, let's go with six. I'm gonna say, okay, that's fine. Now this looks pretty good. Umicorn's starting to look like uh, there's a little bit of a neon effect on this, but uh, I wanna bump it up to the next level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this fill and I can do that by going to the hamburger menu up here in the appearance panel. And I'm going to duplicate that item. And that's going to take my original fill and it's going to copy it. It's going to copy it with all of those effects applied. So I don't have to like reset them all up again, right? And in this case, um, it's going to add a bolder glow behind it. But it's also not going to set that offset any more than my original offset. So it's going to keep it like behind my original fill. So I'm going to go to my outer glow. And... Um, maybe for the background, what I want to do here is I actually want to use a lighter color. So I'm going to use a lighter color. I'm going to use my um, lighter pink. And the reason for that is that that is going to help offset it a bit from that dark background and uh, like help that darker pink glow that we put in on top kind of like pop a bit more. And I'm going to increase the, um, the uh, blur on it so it's going to extend it farther out. And then I might drop this down to something like 75 so it's not as strong. And that's just going to like give it a little bit of a softer look. All right, so we're happy with that. We like our umicorn um, text here. We like that effect. Uh, now, if we want to um, reuse this another time, like let's say we want to we want to keep working, but we want to reuse this maybe on like some artwork, some line work or something, maybe not text. I can go to my window and I can go to graphic styles and I can just add this to, as a graphic style and when it does that it's you're gonna see down here in my uh, graphic styles it kind of gives you a preview of what that looks like graphic styles lets you save your entire uh, appearance stack so all of these effects and all of the layers that we've created in our layer panel for our appearance it saves that stack in this graphic styles and you can apply it to anything so if we make some new text I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna type out some new text I'm going to make it larger and um, I'm making some other text here. I want it to say donuts, donuts. 
I'm going to pick another kind of mono line um, kind of style of um, font, but I think this time I'm going to pick something that's uh, something that's got like a little bit more of a outline style, like a sans, sans serify. Fancy font. We're gonna pick a fancy font. This is what I'm looking for. This is also this is discourse. So these two fonts, if you're looking for them, this one is Benda, and this one is discourse. These are both Adobe fonts. If you want to check them out. All right. So I've got this second line of text here. I can just tap on that uh, graphic style, and it's gonna immediately apply the same neon effect. So once you set it up, nice thing is that you can just keep reusing this forever. Once you set up your graphic style, um, it's set and it's good to go, and you don't have to constantly reapply these settings to everything and you can also edit these settings so we can go into um, our colors here and let's say we don't want it in this color I've got a blue kind of set in here I'm gonna change my fill to the blue fill to the blue we'll change this to like a darker blue or I mean a lighter blue right and now very quickly, we need to change our glows here. Lighter blue. Then we've got our darker blue. And now we've got two lines of text in a neon style that is using our um, appearance stack in two different colors, two different fonts, and it's all live text. If we want to change this to say something like cake, instead we could change that. If we wanted to change the font, we could do that. The sky is the limit. Donuts. I like donuts, though, personally. So, but Jack, does the graphic style only work for type? No, Wade, that's the magic of it. So I can grab a star tool, and I'm going to draw out a star, and I'm going to make a fancy star. I'm going to go to objects. I'm going to use an offset path so I can make a, um, so I can make, like, a fancy star. <laughs> make a compound path. And then I'm going to apply it. So now I've applied it to like a shape as well. So now we've got like umicorns, donuts, um, and it's a fancy, fancy star. Um, anyways, w Richard's also saying, can we take the graphic style into our library? Richard, I'm going to show that to you. Uh, I'll show it to you in the Discord in the after party. So be sure to stick around and join me for the after party. Um, I'll be happy to show you how you can export these out and then import them into your um, Illustrator again. So you can save all of these graphic styles and keep reusing them. Another way that you can use these graphic styles, and this is something that is maybe not as exciting, but it's something that I deal with all the time in my work, and that is uh, gradients. So if you have ever used radial gradients, um, you've probably set up a radial gradient before to make a sort of like a sphere. If you have, you know, wanted to make like when we did our challenges uh, and we went over lighting we created all kinds of spheres right um and you set this all up and you're like everything looked good and you want to set this uh offset so that you've got like a nice highlight right everything so fancy and you're like okay this is awesome and i love it except uh oh um i want to make a new circle and uh I have hit that, that gradient to add it back in, and it doesn't save my actual, like, positioning of my uh, radio gradient. There's a really easy way to fix that using graphic styles. So I'm going to add this as a graphic style, and then I can just draw a bunch of circles out here until my heart is content, just like so. And now I can select all of these at once, one bam, just like that. You can uh, set everything up to have the exact same position of that radial gradient. This works with linear gradients as well. If you have something that's like got to be a specific angle, it's a really fast way to um, add on the uh, add on the radial gradient and the linear gradient at a specific angle. So so far we've been working with the appearance panel on an object level. So all of these appearances have been applied to objects. We can also apply these styles to groups and to layers. So let's take a look at groups first. So I'm going to expand my layers panel, and uh, you might not have seen it, but I did a, a sneaky command G to group these. So now we've got a group of objects. And when we look at our appearance panel, the dead giveaway that you've got a, you're applying something to a group is it'll actually say group right here. So if you click on your appearance panel before you add any effects, if it says group, you're applying it to a group. If it says 
layer, now we're applying it to a layer. So we can start by adding an effect to this group. We'll add a texture. So I'll go to uh, texture in grain. And we can play with these settings and like, oh, this looks pretty good. We're pretty happy with the way that this looks. And I'll hit OK. Now we've got our texture applied to our group. Anything inside this group will have the texture applied to it. Anything outside of this group will not. So if I drag a shape out of this group, it's going to lose that texture. If I add something into the group, like let's say we add some text, we grab our text in here, and we're going to put it inside of our group. Um, now that also has a texture on it. If we could take that one step further, we can ungroup this. Actually, we can uh, remove this appearance. Hang on, let me delete my let me delete my text. I'm going to remove the appearance. This time I'm going to add it to the layer. So I'm going to select my whole layer and I'm going to go to uh, my appearance panel, effects, texture, grain, and we're just going to hit OK. It's going to keep the same settings. Now everything that I add to this layer, if I decided I wanted to add a polygon for some reason um, and I wanted it to be, you know, green, now our, uh, that's a bad color to see what we're doing here. Let's pick a different color. There we go. Now we can see that anything that we add to this layer is going to have that texture applied to it. So it's a really great way. That's how I did this kind of universal texture that you see on this design. I actually put that on the layer so I didn't have to keep adding that effect every single time I created a new object. If I know that I'm going to have that consistent texture, like a papery kind of texture on my design, I can just add it at the layer level and then no matter, I don't have to add it again, you know, over and over again. It's a, a way to kind of work faster. So along a similar line to solving some common problems with the appearance panel, we can use the appearance panel to create stacked line work that lets us utilize some effects that you wouldn't be able to use with brushes. If you've ever tried to make a brush that has like a glow on it, for example, like let's say we wanted to make a, 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 a brush that's like a string of lights. We can't actually use a glow on an object that we want to make a brush. So we can kind of get around that with a little bit of a trick. Um, and I have a really cool technique that I don't think we're going to have time for to make like a really elaborate stacked line brush, but I will try to show it in the Discord after party. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to clear my appearance, hitting this button down here so I just don't have any of the other stuff that I've been working with. I'm going to tap a point, I'm going to tap a point. So now I've got a line, I'm going to make this a stroke, just a black stroke for now so we can see it. I'm going to increase the weight up a lot. I'm going to go like 100. I'm going to add a round end cap, and I'm going to use a dash line trick to make it have um, little circles. So I'm going to make my dash one. My gap's going to be large. It's going to be like 200. That's going to give me uh, the ability to see that each of my dashes has become a circle. And real quickly, I'm going to make this like a yellow color. And now, ooh, I still have it on my layer with the, uh... there we go with the grain on it. All right, so now we've got this. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go to my appearance panel. In this stroke, I can add an inner glow under stylize inner glow. I'm gonna change that to normal and this time it's gonna be center. Increase that blur a lot. Bring it up to 100. Hit okay. Now you've got a nice kind of like inner glow which we wouldn't be able to do with a brush normally. Then I'm gonna go to stylize outer glow. It's gonna add a blue. We don't want blue, we want yellow. These are lights. Um, they could be blue if the light was blue. Um, let's pick something that's a little bit easier to see here. I don't know why I went that dark. Mac and cheese color. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, increase the blur. Oh, you know what? Where did I add that? I'm gonna hit okay. Oh yeah, I did, okay. So you can see that now we've got a nice kind of like Thing, path that looks like a, um, a string of lights and we can again add this to our graphic style and we can make any shape that we want really and apply our graphic style to it and it's immediately going to add some light so if you wanted to do like a string of lights going around like a marquee or something like that you wanted to do like a really fancy sign you can make any kind of path you want and apply that graphic style, and it's going to instantly add those lights to it, um, just kind of a way to add some effects. 
Okay, and I don't know how much time we're gonna have to get into this next part, but I do wanna show you a brief bit about stacking some more complex shapes. So, I've gone over kind of the basics of um, ways, you, well, the appearance, the ways you can use the appearance panel. Um, I wanna go into the 3D stuff though. So, um, you know I love some 3D. I'm gonna draw out a square here. I'm just gonna clear the appearance again to get rid of all that stuff. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a, I'm just going to add a blue fill so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to use a, on that fill, specifically on the fill, because that's what we're working with, I'm going to add a 3D of materials. For the time being, I'm going to use a classic, extrude and bevel classic, isometric, top. And this is going to show, I want to show you this because it's a really important, I want to demonstrate how, um, oh, no, wrong thing. It's important to know the stacking order that you want your effects to be in. Um, it's not just important to know like the order that you want the uh, fills and strokes and things like that, but we also want to keep in mind the order of our effects underneath here. So I've got this. Let's say I wanted to add, we could add like a warp to this. We could do like a, a twist. Let's do like 200. So we can like layer on all these transforms can really start to build up a really interesting shape. We could do like a pucker and bloat. Now this is what I mean when I say you have to be careful when you layer these effects on. You have to consider the stacking order that you do these in because depending on the order that you stack things is going to change the way that this appearance works. And so some things can get a little bit wonky if you have them kind of in the wrong stacking order. The same way that we stacked our um, fills and strokes, Illustrator is going to read these in the order that they're placed. So it's taking that original base shape and then it's going to apply if I switch this order. In this case, it's going to apply a twist first and then a pucker and bloat and then a 3D extrude. If we go the other way, now it's taking that pucker and bloat first, then the twist, and then the 3D extrude. Where it gets really, really messy is if you put this 3D uh, first. Hmm. Oh, come on. I'm having trouble clicking. There we go. We'll just do it this way. Now, like, this is a really cool, could be a really cool, interesting technique, but it's not really what we're going for because we put the 3D first. It's ex doing the 3D extrude, and then it's trying to twist it, and then it's trying to pucker and bloat. So it's like, it doesn't, like, understand the shape by the time it gets to the end because it's twisting and, and, and distorting the 3D effect. So if you put all of the sort of transforms and then your 3D effect, it's going to end up looking like how you kind of anticipate you want it to look like. So just kind of a tip I wanted to give you there. And if we have time, there is, um, there's one more thing I want to show. And I will get into more 3D stuff in the Discord. But um, I know just because this has been such a, a, a point that has been asked about many, many, many times, um, I want to try and address it because it's a really, uh, I, I spent a lot of time trying to troubleshoot this because it keeps coming up in Discord, and um, I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to clear my appearance, and I've just got some lorem ipsum text. I'm going to add a fill, a second fill. I'll make this um, lighter so we can see it, and I'll just keep this sort of black. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to use a um, distort and transform, I'm going to use a transform, and this is a classic, like, move, move. So now we've added that sort of, actually, we're going to do one and one. And then I'm going to increase the number of copies. And as I do that, we're going to get the classic long shadow. Everybody asks about how to make a long shadow. Now, one of the problems with this is if you get really, really close, if we bring this down a little bit, we'll bring it two and two. Um, you start to get like weird jagged edges, but you can see it over here and there's a really quick way to fix that and you can do it using an offset path. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add another layer to this. I'm going to add an offset path. I'm going to just use one. I'm going to change it to round. All right, let's zoom back out. Do, do, do. And I'll change this back down to two or one. Now. I'm just going to adjust these settings until I get the 
right look. And now all of those jagged edges that happen when you sometimes make a um, long shadow have now disappeared. Anyways, I really wanted to showcase that because um, I know that it's been a question in the Discord in the past. How do you make long shadows using this technique while keeping, while removing those jagged edges? And it's really just using an offset path with that round corner. And that's going to get rid of those jagged edges for you very easily. Okay, what else can we do? We've got like 30 seconds. Let's see. Um, the other thing you could do with the 3D effect is you can actually apply that transform to this as well. And we can get into this a little bit more in Discord. But I can actually use a transform and do the same thing. Um, I'm going to do a rotate. I'll do 200. And I will do a scale of 95. And I will increase the copies. And now we can start to do like really weird repeating, swirling kind of shapes um, with the 3D effects. Um, we could add a feather onto this and it would kind of soften it into the background. That's going to be all the time that we have for now. But don't worry, you can uh, join me in the Discord right after this, right now as in wrong button <laughs> right now in the uh, pro tips after party voice channel um, I'll be heading there to continue sharing some techniques with you answering any questions you have you can share your work using the appearance panel and just hanging out um, there's a text chat as well if you don't want to use the voice chat um, but yeah we've got uh, more live streamers here on Behance and I will see you all in the discord bye everyone <laughs>